Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is snowman and I took inspiration from this gingerbread themed paper to make a gingerbread snowman. And then I attached the snowman to some circles to be a plate at the bottom also filled with additional small cookies and that spins around on a brad. Last month I had taught a similar closure for a ball card, but it was sized for only the mini ball pop-up, and people did ask if they could have some measurements for a card that's larger that will fit all three ball sizes, so that's what I will be doing in the video today. There are three available sizes of the pop-up ball dies, and I will be using all three today. And then we recently released these double-ups die sets, and what these are are just a user-friendly second set of the most often used decorator pieces in each set. It just makes decorating the balls quicker. And then I'll be using our snowman add-ons die set to be able to style those three stacked balls as a snowman. For assembly of the ball dies themselves, I'm going to send you to look at some other videos and I will link those in both the end credits of this video as well as in the description box below. So if you are new to the pop-up ball dies, you would want to watch those videos to learn how to assemble them. So I am not going to cover all of the assembly of the ball dies. I will just show here that on the surprise ball, I did add a brad through the bottom since I want to keep the snowman in the card but spinning. And then I used two number 12 soft stretch rubber bands in each ball. Now you can buy a giant box of those rubber bands on Amazon, but we do now have these little baggies full. There's about 50 in each bag. They're on our website. Go to KarenBerniston.com. Look under Tools and Accessories. For glue, I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive and my Fine Tip Bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website and I'm stacking and gluing those three ball sizes together. So surprise on the bottom, bitty on in the middle, and then mini ball on top. Now I make sure that the rubber band sides are all aligned on the three balls so that there is a rubber band side in the front of the snowman on all three layers. And then once those are glued together, I can let it go and you can see that I have the structure of the snowman. So my thought process in designing this gingerbread snowman was that all of the pieces for the snowman would be cut out of the gingerbread colors and then I could use a white gel pen to add some piping and icing and things to it. And I really did want this to look imperfect as it would be if I had actually piped the icing on there. So I am using a Zig brush pen in white that gives more of a paintbrush type of look. For assembly of the hat, there are two tabs at the bottom. They slide through the slot and then glue to the underside of the brim. And what I like to do is have those tabs go in opposite directions, just for a little bit of extra balance when the hat is popped up. I went to the scrap bin and found a lightweight piece of white cardstock. And then I'm going to add packing tape, clear packing tape to the front of the cardstock and then double-sided adhesive score tape to the back of the cardstock. And now anything that I die cut out of that piece will become a shiny white sticker. And what I've done is die cut all the circles, the large and the small, plus the hat band. So the hat band is the larger trapezoid in the set that's a single. And that one is sized to fit across the top of the hat. Sort of in keeping with my everything is gingerbread, I cut the carrot nose and then used the white pen on it. Now there is a score line in that carrot nose, so you can engage that score line and it kind of gives you the location of the adhesive where it should attach. And then I just have the score line be kind of right on the seam at the head. Now in the end, when my card was completely done, I decided that rather than have the darker gingerbread color for the carrot nose, I would use the lighter one because it had more orange tones in it. And then my thought for eyes and buttons were to use the larger white circles first, which would be the icing, and then put the brown circles in the center of each of the white ones. And then for the eyes, I added just a white dot to each one to be a catch light. And then to mimic that look with the small circles, I just used a white pen around the perimeter of the small circles to cut them for the smile. And then for adding the hat, it's just a matter of putting glue on the top of the snowman's head and then collapsing it so that I can make sure that I get that hat centered. For stick arms, the same thing, just cut it out of the gingerbread color and then went around the perimeter with my white pen. And then I just glue those on the sides of the snowman. 
For the tails of the scarf, there is an optional stencil feature built into the die. So if you leave the paper in the die and then go through with a pen, you can add that decorative stripe. So I did that for two scarf tails and then still did my white gel pen around the perimeter. And then there is a die in the set that will cut three scarf neck pieces. So I just have to cut that twice to get six to go all the way around the snowman. Once again, I did the white pen around the perimeter of each piece. So I start by just adding the scarf neck pieces across the front of the snowman. Then I'll add the two tails and then I'll turn the snowman around and add the remaining scarf neck pieces. And then the final bit of decoration I'll do to the snowman himself is the snowflake that comes in the set. Once again, I did the same thing, cut it out of a gingerbread color, highlighted it with a white pen, and then I'm going to glue that to the hat. What I love about card making with dies is that I am always in control of my styling and color choices. So I can have fun making a gingerbread snowman for this card, and then maybe I make this card again, and I style that snowman in traditional colors. I've cut some circles and rings to combine together to make a layered plate for underneath the snowman, and those are made using our circles crosshatch die set. Okay, I'll find the approximate center of that plate and add a hole, and then I'm going to add the snowman to it. Now what I'm looking to do is have the snowman and the plate spin in the card. So first thing I have to do is collapse the snowman so that when I open up the prongs, they're not going to fall out. And then I can add glue all over the base of the snowman so that it is attached permanently to the plate. And when it is added to the card on that brad, then both pieces will spin. And then I'll be able to see all the cookies around the plate. I used the snowflake that comes in the set, again, for cookies. But then I also added some that were made using our Holiday Charms die set. And those are the candy canes and the little teddy bears. And then the tiny little stars came out of the surprise ball pop-up. Okay, time to make a card. I started with cardstock strips, five inches by 12 inches, and then five inches by 10 and a half inches. And then I'll go over the scoring of each of those strips. Okay, some people prefer to score by knowing what each panel is. So here at the top, I've listed what each panel is, six, three eighths, four and five eighths, one. But at the bottom, I'm showing you the cumulative scores on your scoring board. So on your 12 inch strip, Scoring cumulative, you would score at six inches, at six and three eighths inches, and then at 11 inches. Okay, let's swap out to the 10 and a half inch strip. Okay, let's talk first about individual panels. They would be six inches, three eighths of an inch, two and a half inches, half inch, and one and an eighth inches. Or if you prefer to score cumulatively, you will score at six inches, six and three eighths inches, eight and seven eighths inches and nine and three eighths inches. Okay, the longer strip is going to be the top fold card. So I'm going to use the two close together as to make a, a thick kind of gusseted fold. And then that final flap will fold up to the front of the card. And then the other one, the 10 and a half inch strip also has those two close together folds that are the gusseted fold. So those both fold the same way. And then out here on the end where the closure is, I'm going to accordion fold those. So you can see it's mountain and then valley fold so that I've got that little pivoting piece. And then those two are eventually, but not yet, going to go together to create the top fold card with the closure. I need to reduce the width of the closure section so that it's easier to tuck in. So I've decided just to take an inch off. So I just wanna get that in my trimmer and only cut down through those first two panels and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing. And then I can kind of finish out those cuts, removing that little chunk using my scissors. Okay, so for the closure area, I wanna go ahead and seal it closed now. Just here in this little thin panel, I need to add my glue and then press the wider panel to it so that I will basically just make this little pivoting section out on the end. Okay, switching back to the other piece, I'm going to start adding my paper. So I'm using this piece of Maya Designs gingerbread paper, and I've cut the width to four and three quarters, and then I chopped it into individual little strips to fit each panel of the inside of my card. And I am decorating this as a top fold card, so I have my paper oriented up and down. And notice the one inch flap is up at the top. Now, so that I can center 
the snowman and the card, I'm going to collapse it and lay it on top of the surprise ball pop-up die. And then I'm just gonna make sure all the spokes are lined up with the die. Then I can look down from the top and make sure that the snowman itself is within the limits of the card and that I feel like everything is centered nicely. Then I remove the snowman and use a pen or pencil to mark the location of the hole. So I pierce the hole, then I open the brads on the bottom of my snowman, get them through the hole and open them up on the back side. And then I can let go and now I'll have the snowman and the plate spinning inside the card. Okay, now I can add glue to my other piece, the one that has the closure attached, and I'll just put it everywhere except maybe right in the center where the brad is going to spin. And then I just line that up and glue that to the back of my card. That will both cover the brad prongs and make the card stronger. And now I can finish out the inside panels of paper. Okay, so on the front I've added a panel of paper as well, and I want to get that on before I glue this flap down. And when I glue this cardstock flap down, I need to make sure that I'm just using my adhesive out on the outside edges so that the middle portion can hold the closure. And then for reinforcement so that that flap can't come back up again, I'm going to wrap a piece of pattern paper three quarters of an inch by 12 inch all the way around the card and then glue it to the inside. And then that will really make sure that that cardstock flap stays down and doesn't come up as I operate the closure. And to operate the closure, it's just a matter of pivoting that flap until it's tucked behind that cardstock strip. For my title, I used Sweet from Your Sweet along with the Christmas from Merry Christmas to make my own custom title, Sweet Christmas. And then I just styled that like a gingerbread cookie, added it to those crosshatch circles, and then that's going to go right there on the front of the card. And then I made a smaller plate of cookies for the lower flap of the card, and those stars came out of the surprise ball pop-up. And for even more cookies inside the card, I added another plate of cookies up in this back panel, and then a little crosshatch circle on the bottom section as a place to write my personal greeting. So the finished card measures five inches by six inches, but it has those gusseted folds. So you can cram it into an A7 envelope if you were, for instance, giving it in person. I might suggest for mailing that you just go ahead and go for a bubble mailer. Now, normally all designer challenge videos come with an associated blog post, and that will be true for this month as well. But as I am posting this video, TypePad's servers are down. So whenever the blog comes back, I will get that link put in the description box below. In the meantime, if you need some great inspiration for snowman cards, you can head over to our Facebook group, Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, where the team has posted all of their cards. We also have a guest designer this month, so definitely check it out, and thanks so much for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.